Q, QJ, give me a fork so I can scratch my armpit. Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got that one. Oh, good. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the ZBN podcast. I am your host, Hex W. Dot, and with me today is Spiegel Wee. What up? We also have Zyber. Hey there. And our special guest for the day is Dr. Evil Genius, aka Deg. How's it going? Hello, everyone. So, I'm your host for the day, which is completely unusual, but Spiegel didn't have as much to say on this topic. Uh, so, that's, that's why you're hearing my voice instead. And today is actually our 20th episode. Uh, so, we want to do a little celebration about that because, you know, not everybody gets this far. But we're super committed, so there's that. And today, I was I was saying most <laughs> most shows on YouTube always like stop after yeah, seven episodes. They're like, man, we're never gonna get any viewers, and we're just gonna be like lame forever. We're just wasting our time, and we just haven't realized that we're never gonna get any viewers. So we're still basically. Just doing it. I think we're this just is like stupid. my eleventh podcast. I think. Oh really? You've been keeping track? Sometimes. You've been counting all the times that you've been absent. <laughs> well, last time I checked, I was in exactly half of them. Oh, well, okay. You were in half of 19 podcasts? Yes. Is that when the last time you checked? No, it was probably 18. Okay. You know what? So we did We did lose 13. him. In that one podcast, we did lose him for oh, like yeah, the second true. half of the show. So he so. was in half of that one. Yeah. There you go. Anywho, so recently... Dag, welcome to the podcast. Heard, yeah. I know, this is going really great for me. <laughs> <laughs> recently, you heard that, according to the Wall Street Journal and some unnamed source... Netflix and Nintendo are working together to create a Zelda television series, live action, in fact, which is weird. So this is really, really uh, shocking to most people. It kind of came out of nowhere, but everyone else has kind of already covered the topic. But, you know, we wanted to go the extra mile and make a little bit of a podcast out of it and kind of talk about Nintendo's stance on adaptations of their franchises and other challenges that they face with that kind of thing. So what are your guys' thoughts on the the whole idea of a Zelda television show. Okay, well, first of all, uh, like, does anyone actually think this is really happening? Like, I, That is I, true. I mean, a lot of people are getting excited, and I'm like, okay, number one, why are you getting excited? Because, because Nintendo, it's the e- Wall Street Journal. Nintendo even said last night, Nintendo does not comment as a rule. They don't comment on rumors and speculation, which to me sounds like, A, they have nothing to announce at this time, and B, even if they did... It's like so. It's so early in development that like we're probably years away from this. Right, and the article even states that like there's not even any writers attached to the idea I'd yet. Take that. Take that with a grain of salt, because Nintendo. It, I mean, all these video games. It is their policy not to comment on rumor and speculation. And I would say on Netflix's part, um, they recently did that news that they're dropping all the BBC shows and all that stuff. So they got to get content from somewhere because they're probably going to take a viewership loss. So they're probably reaching out to a bunch of different places to get new IPs and whatnot. So it, it has it has a grain of truth to it, I think. That is an interesting point. And, you know, we can't really say that just because Nintendo hasn't commented. It's not something that deconfirms it. Is that a word? Deconfirmed? Right. And I'm not trying to imply that. I'm just saying that, like, basically, if it was anywhere near happening now, they would probably have something to say about it. Like, it's not like they're going to come out tomorrow and say, yeah, we're definitely doing this. Because that just doesn't seem like... It just it doesn't seem like it's anything real right now. And like Right. Like, why commit to the project this early in the, in the process, you know? Right, right. Because, I mean... Not to, not, not to mention the fact that it's probably going to be terrible. And, you know, I don't want to watch that. I don't know. A lot of recent adaptations. I mean, they've got the Netflix has Gotham now, which is pretty awesome. So it's not like it's going to fall to the wayside by being a Netflix show or anything like that. And it's right. not like we're living in the late to 80s, early 90s with all those terrible uh, things that happened for well, Nintendo's I mean, there's, licenses. There's various reasons why, you know, to be skeptical, but we'll get to that later. One thing uh, I will say before we get off this topic is that um, Netflix origi- like Netflix as a company is actually producing better TV than any other actual cable <laughs> station out there. That is like true. seriously, like look stuff. at all the stuff they've done. They did uh, they did House of Cards, Orange is the New Black. Um, uh, they what, picked up uh, they, Arrested Development. Arrested Development season four and the inevitable season five, which is never going to happen. 
Um, and what, Wait, I don't know, they, what does that awesome. mean? Inevitable the last Netflix. two seasons of Star Wars Clone Wars are Netflix uh, yes. only. They got the they got the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt coming out in uh, uh, March, starring the fabulous Ellie Kemper, who I'm in love with. And now we're a Netflix advertisement. So, so let uh, it, I was I was going to say like <laughs> we better get Netflix on board with this show because we just pretty much sold a, a couple subscriptions. I'm sure. Well, I mean, let it let it never be said that Netflix doesn't take risks because they have they they are the ones who pick up things that other people aren't willing to hold on to, uh, just because the viewership isn't you know what they wanted it to be. So even if you know it's kind of a niche market for any given show, they'll still put it on just because. I don't think that ne- is uh, yeah. I think if a show is in sorry, I think if a show is in a niche market like Netflix picks you up and it's like oh now you're successful because everyone has Netflix now. Right, and it's so easy. And Netflix's business model is so different from normal television because they don't necessarily have to pull in viewership for commercial space yeah. advertisement money. They just need subscriptions, so they just need exactly. a wide offering of of shows. So that helps them to take those extra risks because they don't have to worry, oh, uh, we're not competing well against the other networks. Now, as long as they have the subscriptions, it doesn't really matter. Right. I wanted to talk about... Nintendo's past stance on licensing their properties and you know everyone's kind of under the impression at this point that Nintendo doesn't really want to do anything like movies or television and Miyamoto has stated multiple times it's not really in the cards right now to do like a Mario movie or anything like that because well it's Mario but when you think about Zelda Mario and Zelda are very different franchises just because Zelda actually has some degree of lore to it. Apart from Metroid, right? It's really the only franchise they have that really has any semblance of story. Right. We all know why Nintendo has been hesitant in the past to do something like that. And it's because, you know... They've been burned before. Right. Because they're going to screw it up. Right? Like the company that makes the movie is going to screw it up. They screwed up Super Such, Mario Brothers, there and th- there's really That's never the been there's really never been a good video game movie. I mean, like if you think about it, if you it, look at it, the only real successful video game movie franchise is Resident Evil, and it is so entirely and completely different from the games that it's pretty much its own entity anyway. And they're right. not even good, and they're not even good, so it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, a lot of people would argue with you about that. Personal opinion. Can we include Wreck It Ralph? Well, that's see, that's another story because Wreck It Ralph is 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 video gamey but it's not an adaptation and that's why that my that's why that was successful but with something like zelda they're they're comparing it to a game of thrones kind of thing but for the family set which i which i cannot I understand that parallel started th- someone said that and i was just like oh no 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 how like how yeah, that, <laughs> is it, what is is like is zelda gonna take her top off or what no, like what's family gonna, setting come on cue laugh track uh, uh, future Omni, don't cue so the laugh yeah, track, future. please. <laughs> okay, so we got our inside joke in earlier. <laughs> um, this is all the makings of a classic ZBN podcast. Does it? No. Anyway, uh, Game of Thrones, like the selling point that I find of the Game of Thrones is the the wide breadth of character and the huge cast list and just things are happening everywhere that affects everything. And Zelda's story is all about the lone hero. You know, the, the games all have Link. I don't see how they, right. they're making a comparison to Game of Thrones unless they're just going straight with that. Oh, it's fantasy with magic mixed in. But as far as actual production, I don't I don't get where they're going with that. It's a I mean, I think maybe they're trying to draw a comparison towards uh, like demographics. You know, people who are interested in this kind of setting might be interested in this show that we're making. But that seems like a really vague and general comparison to make, and it's probably not really any used to most people yeah it's super vague i'm surprised they would even make a statement like that saying this show is going to be like game of thrones what was the exact quote again do you have it in front of you uh, i do not have the quote in front of me but they i mean multiple people have talked about the fact that they're they draw they drew a comparison between game of thrones and but the difference being it's i want to i want to friendly. know who they're quoting as having said that like that doesn't sound like that doesn't sound like a, a thing that Nintendo would say, so I wonder if it's well, whoever they're partnering r- with. Well, obviously, the Zelda show will have a bunch of people dying. <laughs> right. But I'm just surprised that like they would even make a statement like that so early in production, you know? Like, wh- like you haven't even... You don't even have a writer, and you're already saying it's going to be like Game of Thrones? Like, how can you say that? It, it, it could be more like... A, so I, I was going to say The Sopranos, but that doesn't make any sense. I, it I seems to up. me like they're just trying to grab somebody's attention, like... By the way, you guys already watched Game of Thrones. This is going to be kind of like that. 
So, so they've already got our they've already got our attention. Just we, by being Zelda is a famous game franchise. Yeah. Like a lot of people know about this franchise. I don't think you need to I don't think you need to water it down by saying, Oh, it's like Game of Thrones when it's really not. I pulled up and you just the Wall Street Journal article here and um, it says as it seeks writers to work on the show, Netflix is describing it as Game of Thrones for a family audience, this person said. So supposedly it's netflix describing it but it is the anonymous source that is saying that netflix is describing it that way uh, so that's their hope then yeah right that's what they want it to be that's what they're describing yeah, they don't it even as have that's probably it. what they're yeah. wanting to go towards whenever they're looking for their writer and starting to produce it that they want to get that that feel i'm wondering how old link would be in it 39 <laughs> it, well it says an ordinary boy named link oh interesting so I would imagine 17, or he could be a kid. I don't know. What if they did it like Majora's Mask? Like, what if the whole story of the series was the Majora's Mask story? That would be now that would be awesome. Amazing. They are never going to do it, though. No, they were never going to do oh. it. That'd be like 24, but instead 72. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I'd watch that. <laughs> I just, I just had too, like, that's a really good or, or if just like I, each episode was one three-day cycle, just over and over again. That'd be interesting. I just had like a fan seizure. That was amazing. <laughs> Fantasm. <laughs> Physi- it would like definitely a give them enough reaction. stuff to do it. Yeah, perhaps. But maybe it would get repetitive as well. But I mean, while we're talking about this, we can talk about the, the challenges of trying to adapt any sort of video game series to, to film or television, and especially Nintendo, because one of the problems is most of their properties are very scarce on story or narrative elements with so with mario he's a mascot character so that's on right. purpose he's not there's not depth to him so that they can pretty much just shoehorn him into any of their titles exactly and that's kind of like with sonic except he actually has a tv show and, and he also has plot it's confusing and he doesn't do a, he's not a good mascot so hex recently wrote an article on the zb.net our website about sonic and how he's not a great mascot character um and Shots like fired? yeah and it's a very controversial article but it's not really because everyone agrees with it <laughs> but it's it's a really good article so you should go check it out on our website the zb.net it's just our place where we can get our uh, our creative juices flowing and we we sort of um just get all of our stuff out that we couldn't we couldn't put on a podcast or we couldn't put on the ign zelda board or whatever so the zb.net is kind of like our little pet project and we're just bringing it together we're starting to get like lots of views now we got like two thousand views the other day uh, and they were all legitimate. So I'm still salty about that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't need to talk about that. So just go check out the ZB.net. Uh, it's an awesome website. We hope you come back every day because we're putting up content every day. Uh, we feature the podcast there. Rush the Ford is there. Uh, lots of other stuff. Space Pirate Radio, Deg Road of Peace. Um, yeah, Zyber will write an article at some point in the future, maybe in 2018. <laughs> oh, hopefully. <laughs> don't hold your breath. Yeah, but... Uh, homework. So, the ZB.net. Everyone go look right now. Just pause the podcast, go look. And now that you're back, what were we talking about? Oh, yes, I challenges with, with trying to adapt Nintendo stuff. So, yeah, I mean, Nintendo doesn't have a lot of story-based properties, but Zelda is one of them. Even though, when you look at a Zelda game, it's also kind of like the barest threads of a story, you know? Just trying to create a setting for the player to you know, a context for the player to actually try to rescue or save the world. So one thing that they have in their favor is the fact that they've established a lot of lore over the past how many years? It's since 85, 86? Yeah, almost 30 years. Wow. To start. 30 so, years. 86 in Japan, 87 in America. So they do have a lot of source material to pull from, but what context are they going to use to pull that all together? One question that a lot of people have is whether or not it's going to adapt a specific plot from a specific game. And I I talk about that as if it's sure to happen. But personally, I would prefer that they not try to do that and try to create, you know, something that's made for the medium. Because I don't think any of the plots of the game necessarily lend themselves well to to just being watched. Because there's such an interactive element, you know? Yeah, I'm going to have to side with you on that, definitely. Um, the games are great and wonderful stories for a game, but if you're going to do an episodic uh, story like like a show, you're going to want something that's a little better adapted. And a little better than just like saying Link goes to this place and collects five things in this episode. Right. <laughs> yeah, and 
if you're going to be doing a show, and we'll we'll go back to that Game of Thrones reference, a larger cast, which will require them to make up new characters, or at least focus on the characters that aren't focused on in the games, is a must. Even if they're not yes. going the Game of Thrones route, they you need more than just Link wandering around the field. Yeah, that is one thing that they could do, is put a, a spotlight on things that are usually external to the player, and really focus on, on those for even entire episodes. One parallel I drew just talking to my roommates is making it kind of episodic like a show like Firefly does, where they kind of just go on little tiny escapades every every episode, but also drawing from the lore and, and maybe doing something where, let's say, in the first episode, they, they, they go into a, a cave and they fight Goma because Goma is such a pivotal part of the Zelda lore because she's been in everything. Um, so they could kind of use fan service as a way to drive some of the plots in these episodes but that's just one idea i had i don't know what you guys think about that this definitely isn't going to be like a minute to minute exactly watching it kind of show it's probably going to be episodic where they just have several things going on and like like they're recording bits of it and such it is kind of interesting though i've already seen comments being all like I hope they don't mess with the lore, like the lore isn't already messed up to begin with. <laughs> well, I was I was actually going to talk about that. Like, that's my biggest concern, actually, is like they're going to take this lore and they're going to screw it up and it's not going to, like, is it going to be canon? How are they going to treat it? And it's are not. they just going to take it from, okay, I, I well, if it's, not, if it's not canon, then I just don't really understand how they're going to do it. Like, it's going to well, have to be, of- it's going to have to be, you know what it's going to have to be? It's going to have to be Hyrule Warriors. Basically, <laughs> well, think it's of gonna the have Marvel, to be a Hyrule Warriors TV show. Think of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, though. Like it's separate from the comics. It's sort of, you know, self-contained. Own... Right. It's it's another version of it, which I don't know how many versions of all of their properties they've had over the years. But it's basically like another reboot. So treat it like them doing it again, but in the movie or television format. Do you guys remember that Halo thing they made to advertise Halo 4? The Forward Onto Dawn? Forward Onto Dawn is really good. Do you guys yeah, remember when there was a Halo movie happening? It's still technically never happened? maybe happening, sort of. Yeah, and so is, the, so is the Metroid movie, anyway. Well, anyways, Forward Onto Dawn, it really wasn't that great to me, but it did bring some people that never played Halo games to be all like, oh, is there more of this thing? So, like, my dad watched it, and he kept asking me, are there more movies? I'm just like, no, no, there's but just there games. But there are games. You want to play, yeah. Dad? So people could watch this show and be all like, hey, I want to play these games now. Free advertisement, sort of. Not, not really. I will admit that I was not at all interested in buying Halo 4, and then I watched Ford on the Dawn, and I was like, ah, dang it. There goes like 60 bucks. <laughs> Like that game had literally nothing redeeming about it except the story, so you just wasted 60 bucks? Is that what you're That's saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. Just because I was so and invested the story, already in Halo, and I thought re-ended. I was done, and they released this Ford Unto Dawn, and I was like, no, they're still, they're still going with the lore, and they still got that Halo feel to it. All right. Crap. Let me ask you, are you still interested in Halo 5 after playing Halo 4? Uh, so I What's bought an Xbox guys? One. <laughs> What's happening, guys? This We're is devolving. A, this is a Nintendo podcast. <laughs> Cyber has now taken over hosting. <laughs> You're done. No! This is my. This is going to be f- my big break, guys. You can't do this to me. You're foiled. I'm foiled. Donald, Donald Trump. The, the day I host a video is the day that you guys are dead or something. Mm-hmm. You hosted now for like it is. two years. Is, like is that a threat? <laughs> what is this? Yes. <laughs> Wait a Die minute. Omni. <laughs> I, I honestly don't remember what topic we were on. Um, something about Zelda. Oh yes, like how they would implement, you know, episode and things like oh. that. Actually, one thought I just had: Would there be a party of, you know, heroes? Like Link can't be on his own in a television show like this because one, he's already known as a silent hero. So is he going to talk? First of all, I was and thinking about that earlier. Yeah. And definitely going to need a companion at least. Right. I, think gonna I think he's going to talk. There's going to be a fairy. I guarantee it. No, I I'll think he's going to talk on him having a fairy. I think it's going to. I think it's going to be a little naked imp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about how that would be like projected on a TV show. <laughs> and she might write on him a couple of times too. Oh my gosh! Okay. Well, there. It's Phrasing. supposed to be for families. <laughs> so uh, the thought I had was, was we're going to have to tag have this. A, okay. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Sorry. Go go. <laughs> the thought I had was that. You know, he'd have a party of friends, perhaps even different races, like pull from the lore, 
Give him a Goron buddy. Give him a Zora buddy. I don't know. Make it kind of like Majora's Rudo. Mask, but different people. She's probably going to have to wear clothes. I was going to say, give give her Rudo with uh, give him Rudo with a push up bra that the Zoras apparently evolved. <laughs> well, yeah, we've already got precedents for Link having allies at least in particular dungeons in the game. So we've got um, Wind yes. Waker has Medi and um, the little Korok guy who's named Medley. And not Medi. Maybe it could, maybe sorry, it could kind of, of be like Pokemon, where he kind of finds someone along the way. Eventually, they part ways. And then he meets a new companion, whatnot. You know, when he said Pokemon. I was thinking he's gonna train these companions. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> we know he's got Hyrulean Velcro and everything, but come on. But I mean, and why not? Use Maybe he's training them to be able to defend their own dang clans because I like that Link idea. Doesn't have suddenly. the time to. Link doesn't have the time to save everyone, does he? Depends so. on if he's got the ocarina or not. Depends mm. on if they tell the Majora's Mask story or not. I have two. I just thought of a good question. Will the music be made by Koji Kondo? No, probably not. I know, but like, will the music be Zelda music at all, or will it be completely new? I mean, maybe. That way, hold on. That's a good question. Like, what about the themes for this show? Like every every music uh, every music piece from every show ever. Generally, there's like a theme that ties everything together, like the Seinfeld bass line or the. Or, you know, the, like you'll just hear like the motif of the theme song played throughout the show. Will they take from Zelda music to do that? I think they should. I think they will. Whether or not they, they, whether think, or not they could, I think would be a different question. I think if this copyright. does go through, well, this, but if that's Nintendo something they would is probably attached need to, to the do. project, they can give that licensing and, and whatnot. So. That's true. I mean, they could even just draw inspiration from it. Because, like, true. all. The, the newer Zelda games, they don't really sound exactly like the old ones, but they still have inspiration from it. I think it'd be a necessity for whoever's making this show to do that, because I don't know if anyone else has kind of noticed this trend, but when Capcom was developing Zelda Zelda games, they pulled a lot from themes from older games because it's easier to feel like you're actually Nintendo rather than not Nintendo when you just imitate them, you know? Pulling from already established tunes and things like that In, to make it feel right. So they'd probably do that just for the sake of making it seem authentic, if that's the right word to use. They're, but, they're definitely going to have to to play up the Zelda fan base that already exists and get that whole... Um, uh, you said it earlier and my brain's blanking out. We are starting to talk about this as if it's actually happening. Well, that's because we <laughs> want it to happen. It's true. Well, we want some it to happen, people, but some we people want it to want happen it to the happen. right way. And that's the that's the kicker is we we all have our ideas of what would make a good adaptation for Zelda to TV, but will they take that? My ideas are horrible. They direction? shouldn't pay attention to me. <laughs> Actually, the I was you, I kind of like the idea of the naked imp that followed Link around. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Majora's Mask, uh, Spiegel, and I think one thing they could do is maybe have the overall plot kind of uh, its own thing. It could be its own thing, but every now and then there's an episode that pays, you know, homage, homage to kind of like of how games. Hyrule Warriors had its own plot, but it like had separate right. locations from like each that. game that told those stories. Yeah, I mean, I really like. Hyrule it's like Warriors. I said, it's like I said. The only way they're going to make this come together as in terms of the lore is they're going to have to do it like Hyrule Warriors. Otherwise, it's just going to be a convoluted mess, and right. that's what I'm afraid would happen. Uh, and I, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Well, and we, what they we'll need see. to do is like adapt the general plot lines of those games, but not in such a specific way that it actually has to follow the way those events I th- took place. I really think it would be better to make it its own complete continuity that, you know, takes place in the Zelda timelines or draws inspiration from the Zelda games as they are, but doing anything that actually like connects to the Zelda games that we already have, I think is just going to cause it to become that convoluted mess. I'm not saying like Super Mario Brothers movie on this, but... Well, it would be amazing if they were to actually make this show and then have it end, and then Nintendo would actually take inspiration from it to make like a sequel game or something. What if they made like Zelda the TV show the game? That's Okay, let's joke. not do a Sonic Boom. That's a, a formula for disaster. No, <laughs> no, it would be really bad if they were to make the game based off exactly of it, but if they were to take the settings and stuff and make a newer game. That'd be interesting. I don't know. I, I, I don't think that's something that they would do as, as a Western company is probably going to be the ones developing this show. Yeah. That, that doesn't sound like Nintendo anyway, that, that sort of a uh, line of thinking like, Oh, we should take the game and then make a, 
or we should take the the TV show and make a game based kind of loosely off the show. Like it, uh, that doesn't sound like Nintendo to me Not at all, right? Because Nintendo's always driven by what their gameplay is, right? Is like, and their stories are always based on that. Well, on that. well maybe they'll make gameplay and be all like, "Oh, hey, we could just put the setting on it. Boom, done." No, Nintendo's no, always <laughs> never works out. They've always been dedicated to that whole "we do our own thing." Like mm-hmm. my friends and I used to joke, if you ever suggest something to Nintendo, it's a surefire way to make sure it never happens. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Nintendo, you should not have naked imp ladies. <laughs> Too late. I know. They're not listening. We can just They're going to retroactively world. change Twilight Princess and all of our memories are going to disappear. <laughs> Wait, what are you they, talking they about? Have, what? They have time machines. We know this. We know that they have the best Nintendo console ever released with Jesus. <laughs> If you don't understand that reference, you should go watch the other episodes that we have. Go, go watch episode 19 anyway, because it's better than this crap right here. <laughs> yeah, this, show, probably... this show is so off the rails. Okay, so we've now learned that uh, I'm a much better um, co-host, or not even a co-host, just I'm, much, I'm a much better uh, non-host than I am a host, because the shows are the shows are much more entertaining when I'm just like making fun I of the questions. I think it would be amazing if I were to host an episode. We should do that for the 100. <laughs> Could you just imagine <laughs> Well, yeah, the yeah, hundredth get there. I promise. Okay, everyone who tunes into the hundredth episode, Zyber is going to be the host. Hosting on April first, yeah, it'll, it'll be amazing. Yeah, it's going to be the April first hundredth. Th- we're going to do a hundred episodes, and we're going to do them all between now and April first. Or we're just going to do a hundred episodes in the episode for April first. We're going to yes. have a hundred topics. We're going to cover all of them, <laughs> and I'll be the host. It'll be amazing. <laughs> Actually, I feel like this is going to happen. Also, Nintendo, you should not make love retirement homes. Oh, <laughs> that, that pause me. That pause made me feel a little bit awkward. <laughs> you should not make love. <laughs> <laughs> <Retired That's laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, are we we really done this for like thirty minutes? Yeah, we have. Oh. So oh, I mean, man. just to spitball here, are there any other Nintendo properties that you think would lend themselves well to specifically television and movies? Well, we've already Metroid. said Metroid. Yeah, right. Metroid, Zero. like I as as. As as much as I despise, how many times can I say the word as? As much as I despise the idea of a Zelda TV show or a Mario Brothers movie or whatever, the idea of a Metroid movie has always really captivated me because I think they could do some really interesting things with it, like in terms of the sci-fi and the lore, which in my opinion is much better than the lore from Zelda. I know I catch a lot of crap for that, but I think the lore from Metroid is way better. Um, because I can't it, comment because I don't know it. I'm gonna fling some. You need at you. to play. How have you not bought Metroid Prime Trilogy I bought it. yet? I bought oh, it. You did? Oh, good, good. Okay, <laughs> play it ASAP. Will do. Um, but anyway, I, I, they've they've done a much better job keeping everything coherent, which of course is easier with fewer games. Um, but the fact that it's always the same Samus, and you could kind of just tell the whole story in one movie, I think. And I think that would be really interesting. A Metroid film or movie would be really amazing i could see them going like an artsy direction with it you know it's silence and just walking around and, and fighting and, and that whole sci-fi like on your or own to the other m yeah could you imagine if they did the whole movie with like no dialogue yeah like i would, <laughs> that be, would be amazing super into that actually almost like wally almost like I wally see, yeah. i could see other m being a movie and being totally awesome compared to the game yeah. That's because the, it was a game trying to be a movie. Yep. I know. But, like, it, it fits better for me, I think, because it has all the voices and stuff. Yeah. You remember I also Metroid think that Pre- they could try, try making me- an F-Zero show again. Yeah, I kind of was about to suggest F-Zero, like a Fast and the f zero Apparently they already had a show at one point. Really? Yeah, and I didn't know about it until recently. I, you know, I have heard of that. F-Zero GP Legend. Yep. If you guys don't have any other suggestions, I actually had an idea just now. Could they do an um, Animal Crossing TV show like a sitcom? Yes. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> actually, like yes. you know that actually sounds really funny. And they, ask totally viewers, that. and they ask viewers after every episode what they might do next. Yeah. No. no. And then they could do like a little segment, kind of like Sonic says, but instead it's Villager with his murderous eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you should not murder your parents. Wink. <laughs> yeah, he demonstrates all of the things that you shouldn't do by doing them. Like you animaniacs. shouldn't take an axe and slash someone in the face. Jeez, good <laughs> idea, bad That's idea dark. from Animaniacs. <laughs> I love this episode. No one one thing I think that would actually make an interesting cartoon would be Splatoon because you know in that single player trailer they they had all of these little tiny references like split second references to all of this uh, lore that they seem to have established already with this war between the the octopi and the squids and I think they could expound on that by making it a show 
Okay, but my only problem with the Splatoon TV show would be I don't see how they could do it effectively when the characters can't even talk to each other while they're fighting. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, all right. Ooh. That's well okay. Played, I'm still salty. Well played. They can teleport to that themselves. That was the best part of the episode. I was set up so well for that. Okay. We should just end it now. Like, yeah. we're not going to top that. So, no. I mean, any final thoughts on... <laughs> no, but I, I agree with you. I think a Splatoon TV show would be really cool. Um, Like, just because I just want to see more Splatoon, honestly, because the art is so cool. Yeah. It and looks amazing. With the whole idea of creating your own character, it's not like they're tied to any specific, you know... Right character at this point so they could make one up and it wouldn't feel like it has to be canon or anything like that the one thing I would be afraid of with that is it ending up on some like horrible soulless uh, at, like company with like Nickelodeon like the Madagascar <laughs> penguins or whatever and it just sucks and it's just <laughs> like man this sucks have you guys seen that that uh, movie pitch for a Zelda movie made by the studio that now does Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and also did Astro Boy I don't think so. I'll give you guys a link to that. But so there was a pitch. It got shut down. But it was really strange in terms of style. It it felt really Western. Uh, Ganondorf looked kind of like this like jock with parted hair in the center and like oh Sephiroth my. kind of locks kind of thing, which looked really dumb. But that sounds uh, hilarious. I actually, actually <laughs> but you, you guys should watch it if you haven't seen it. I'll post a link in the description. In fact, I, I might would totally love it. I would totally love if Avatar team did it though. Avatar, which, the which Avatar? James Cameron? James Cameron? The Last Airbender. Oh, no. <laughs> James Cameron's Avatar doesn't have a show. The show, not the movie. Yes, not not the Last Airbender, the movie. Please keep M Night. Sh- <laughs> if M Night Shyamalan is attached to this uh, the project <laughs> and it goes through, kill us I'm going to commit suicide. We actually had a joke about that on uh, the Zelda boards, <laughs> if you noticed in the casting. There, oh, could be an, there could be an episode called like Rudo in the Water or something, and just tie uh, uh, tie everything to all the like terrible uh, movies he's made. No, don't ruin my <laughs> franchise. This is my favorite. You already ruined the third Avatar. Sense. I don't know. The, the, the directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Sheik is actually Zelda. What a twist. <laughs> was that your impression of M. Night Shyamalan? Uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't say it was good. <laughs> I thought he just he sounded like a white guy. I didn't think he had a, an accent I was, of any kind. Uh, actually, I was doing the robot chicken version of M. Night Shyamalan. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You want Nintendo? They should totally release a Mario show because you know they haven't done that before. And I bet it would be great. Do you guys remember, um, like a couple months ago, like this story leaked about Sony, like being in talks with Nintendo to do a Mario, like animated movie or something? I haven't heard of that. You guys don't remember this? I remember that article. Yes. Yeah. yeah like starters, it. Sony and Nintendo teaming up. Period. Well, it's Sony. It's Sony Pictures, right? Not like Sony. Sony Pictures, but I'm just saying it's still weird. It is. But again, Sony is a huge company, so it's like it doesn't strike me as odd. And it would be animated. I'm assuming it would be that studio. Yeah. That does. Uh, yeah. What is it? Nobody at this. Nobody at this point in time is going to suggest a live action Super Mario Brothers movie. Like. No. <laughs> nobody would ever do that again. They need to wait until at least everybody who saw the last one is dead. They are making a Sonic movie, actually. That studio is it live action? So well. Live action with, mixed with, with real CG. hedgehogs. No, it would be like the Smurfs. <laughs> That's the plan. Ugh, I know. Ugh, that's my like, reaction. Please continue dragging Sonic through the mud. Thank that is on, that is on the record. My anyone ever asks me about that idea again, that is going to be my reaction. Ugh, ugh. There are there are actually going to be a animated Ratchet and Clank and Sly Cooper movies, and I'm really excited for those. They now, see really those those will work because those games were very uh like very cartoony, cartoony I guess, and it just lends itself really well to it. Yeah, well, actually, and I'm not studio. really fond of how they are making the Psycho where people look, but Ratchet and Clank, it looks pretty much exactly like the game characters. Right, and I was just saying uh, it's because the studio that's doing it is is tied with the actual studio that developed the game, so you know the models yeah. are actually straight from the game and things like that. Yeah. I'm sorry, I want to go on record as saying that I would totally watch any sort of Sonic thing that had a real hedgehog as Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> like yes. a real tiny... Like, like an actual, like, they took a hedgehog and dyed him blue. <laughs> and they have a... Can you imagine PETA's reaction to something like that? <laughs> they need to let this poor but hedgehog still, go that dyed him blue. He's still voiced by and the they, same guy. And, and he they still stapled talk. a second tail to this fox. 
How could that? Genetic engineering at its finest. This hedgehog turns to the camera. It's supersonic time. I go fast. Oh. <laughs> and then they throw a uh, gold they, paint all over it. They do like a they do like a time lapse of the the hedgehog like moving really slowly, but they make it look like it's fast. Just, <laughs> they just think like <laughs> they accidentally accidentally have someone walking by them, so they're like super fast. Okay, I think it's time to put this this, this episode show, down. This show is amazing. <laughs> this is the best show we've ever done. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is. We're not even. I don't even understand. Okay, story time. Sto- story time. Story time. Story time. Yeah. No. Uh, no, it's story time. Okay. So okay, when I'm, we first this to... idea was proposed to me last night by some people in the uh, the ZB Skype chat regarding like doing a, a minish recap about the Zelda news, and I said, well, okay. Um, I don't feel like this is minish recap worthy because it's not even real news because nothing actually happened. I said the same uh, thing. <laughs> And then Hex and then Hex said, "Well, why don't we do a show based around Nintendo's IP and like whether they would be willing to like like what we think their potential is or something for creating movies or TV shows based off their IP." And I said, "Well, I don't know. I don't think I'll have much to say about that." And uh here we are, and I don't even think we're even talking about that anymore, so I may, I no. might be right. I don't know. <laughs> I think but that's okay. My favorite part. Well, it was still a hilarious episode. This is the funniest episode we've ever done. Quick recap of the episode as I as I see it. Um, Naked Imp, and our only reaction right. to Super Mario being mentioned every single time was, "Yeah, that sucked," and then we moved on. Yep. Dag, you uh, speak imp. one one last thing, um, and I'm I'm kind of hijacking the hosting duties. But you said you <laughs> you said you wanted to mention uh, the Zelda animated TV show. And I assume since you have that, you also have the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, right? I actually do not. I just have the specific Zelda um, animated series. So how was that? <laughs> it's it's, it's horrible. horrible, but it's great. Okay. Okay. Like, it's... Remember that one episode where, like, the minions decide to try to take over Howl Castle by themselves? Yep. Some I like some of the lore things that they started introducing in the animated series, actually, and I kind of incorporated into my own Zelda lore um, theories, like the evil jar and stuff like that. <laughs> well, this was as early like as that. what? This was as early as the 80s, Yeah, right? this is like early 90s, late 80s. like 91, I think? I think it's... I think was... The, yeah, I think right around I have that there. year in my head for some reason. I don't know why. It's post-Zelda 2, but pre-Link to the Past, so... 1989. Was it 89? You looked it up? 89. Cool. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I looked up Zelda TV show, and guess what showed up first? The Netflix um, thing? Excuse me, princess. No, Netflix. Compilation. Duh. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, I think this I think this episode needs to stop. You've said that <laughs> so many times. Of, I know. You're just trying no, to let's, crush let's the real vibe guys, here. Basically. Just keep going. We're coming up on almost 50, and I feel like, you know... Where do you almost get almost 50. 50 from? I've been We're recording like for like 30 40. minutes. I'm showing yeah. 40. What? 30 minutes. I'm showing 45, We're like 40 something. 45 minutes yeah, of but Skype you, chat. You're, forget, you're forgetting that like almost half this stuff is going to be completely cut out because it's worthless. Oh. Nonsense. Well, no. Me. What are you talking about worthless? That first okay. introduction so was let's, the best part. Future Omni, do not cut anything out. Hey, Omni, do the plugs. The plugs? Yeah. You know, the likes. What are the plugs? The likes. Oh, oh my gosh. Hey, I just so we're actually ending the episode. Look at that. Okay, well, so, if you like this show, then please subscribe to our humble little channel, because we like when you do that. And also, if you have a comment or a user question, feel free to leave those, because we're going to answer those user questions at some point in the future. Well, if we ever we get any user first. questions, yeah. Exactly. We've actually been getting a lot of comments recently, so keep that trend up, guys. I want to see, like, 20 comments on this one. By we're the way, goal. by the way, I'd like to point out, uh, we did pass 50 subscribers on uh, the YouTube channel, which I forgot to mention the last couple of weeks. We've, we've had it for a while, but I just want to thank everybody who subscribed to the show and everybody who's listening, because we really, we love you guys. We love that uh, people care enough to subscribe to us. We love that we're getting stupid comments now. Um, yes. We got our first <laughs> stupid comments last week. It was very exciting. And so if you're, if you're listening to this, uh, sorry, your comment was really stupid. <laughs> So we're not going to say your name. No, though, but so. so you know who you are, though. <laughs> leave more so. stupid comments. And if you ever meet us in real life, we will give you free hugs. But seriously, comment because we like we like knowing who you guys are, because right now it's been kind of one sided. So the more we know of you, the more, you know, I don't know where I was going. NBC, <laughs> the more we can and knowing is half the power or battle, whatever. <laughs> That's we're the one. No religious power. We're built around being a community so, anyway. So let's commune. Yeah, exactly. And join us in our little community. So like, comment, subscribe to all that stuff and also check out the zb.net and i have been your host hex dot and 
for Spiegel Wee, Dr. Evil Genius, and Zyber, uh, good night, good morning, good afternoon, bye. Good evening. Thanks for listening. We're doing like a Truman Show thing here? No, of course. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs>